Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 1.7 families of curves. Uh, so just like your family, uh, you all have the same ancestry, uh, polynomial functions kind of share the same characteristics. So a family of functions is a set of functions that have the same characteristics or the same roots. In general, polynomial functions that belong to the same family will all have different y-intercepts with the same roots. Unless, of course, the point x equals 0 is one of the roots, then you're only going to have y equals 0 or as your y-intercept. So, for example, let's take this general polynomial function, y equals a, x plus 2, x minus 1, and x minus 3. This represents the family of cubic functions, family because we don't know what the a value is yet, so family of cubic functions with roots at negative 2, positive 1, and positive 3. And if we change the value of a, then we're going to have sets of unique functions, all with the same roots. So for example, y equals 2 times x plus 2, x minus 1, x minus 3. Or if we set our y value equal to negative 1.5, that creates another unique function with the same root. Uh, so example 1 says determine a possible equation for a function with the following characteristics. Now when I say possible, I mean no specific vertical stretch factor. So what we can do is we can just kind of create a value for a later on, um, but first we'll set up the general equation. And to do that, we need to take in all of the information that's given to us. So we have uh, a function that is of degree 3 that starts in quadrant 3 and ends in quadrant 1. And what this information tells us is the end behavior of our function. And so just to recap what the quadrants look like, there's quadrant 1 and then we go counterclockwise. So quadrant 2 would be here, quadrant 3, and then finally quadrant 4. So if I had a function that started in quadrant 3 and ended in quadrant 1, that is of degree 3, well, it would, it would have a shape, something like that. So when our cubics rise to the right and fall to the left, that tells me that my a value, my, po my leading coefficient, must be positive. Okay, so let's start setting up our equation. So y equals some stretch factor a, and then it tells us we have roots at negative 1, so I'll put x plus 1 in the bracket, another root at x equals 2, so x minus 2, and then it says that we have a y-intercept at 0, 0. Well, remember where 0, 0 is. It's right on the origin, so our x value is 0. That gives us another root. So we can just call that x. Okay, so this is our general polynomial function. Now the question says determine a possible equation. So pick a value for a. As long as it's positive, you can pick any value for a. So I could say uh, y equals 100. Let's say x, x plus 1, and then x minus 2. I could put in 30, I could put in a million if I wanted to. Any number, as long as it's positive, uh, will be acceptable as a possible equation. Okay, let's try one more. So this time we want to create a function of degree 4, and this says it falls both left and right. So again, this tells us our end behavior. Now when an even degree function both falls to the left and to the right, that tells me that my leading coefficient must be negative. And then it says we have double roots both at 3 and at 5. And again, remember what double roots means? That means we are going to have an exponent 2 on our bracket. So let's set up the general equation. y equals a, 
And then root at 3 tells me I need to put x minus 3 in the bracket, but squared because it's a double root. And another root at 5, so x minus 5, and again, squared because it's also a double root. OK, so again, we're trying to create a possible equation. So again, sub in any value a that you like as long as it's a negative number. So I don't know, let's say y equals negative uh, 3.7, x minus 3 squared, x minus 5 squared. And that's it. Let's move on. This time, example two is a little bit different because we want to determine an exact equation. So this time, what we're going to need to do is we actually have to find and solve for a. So let's set up the general equation. So we have y equals a, and then it says we have roots at negative 4. So x plus 4, just a single root. And we have a point of inflection. Remember, that is our triple root, which means we need to have exponent 3 on our bracket. Uh, so point of inflection at x equals negative 1. So x plus 1 inside the bracket, and then exponent 3. And then this information here will help us determine a. Remember that our y-intercept is really a point on our function. Y-intercepts happen when x equals 0. So the y-intercept coordinates are 0 and 8. So what this does, this helps us find the value of a. Because what we're going to do in our general equation is we're going to sub in for x and for y. And if we do that, the only variable that we have left over is a, and it makes it very easy to solve for it. So let's do that. 8 equals a, so we have 4 left in this bracket, and 1 cubed left in that bracket. Well, 1 cubed is just 1. 1 times 4 leaves us with 4a on the right side. Divide both sides by 4. So we find our a value, and that is 2. So our exact equation that goes through the y-intercept 0, 8 is y equals a and then x plus 4 and x plus 1 cubed. Uh, so on the right side here, I want you to take a second and to graph it. So we do have a quartic function here. We have roots at negative 4 and negative 1. Remember, the root at negative 1 is a triple root, so it's going to have a point of inflection. It's going to have that cubic bump. We also know that we have a y-intercept at 8, which is right there. And we know that this is a quartic function, so both ends are going to do the same thing. Because our leading coefficient, our a value is positive, both ends will rise. So let's try our best to draw that. So we know our function is going to go through 8, and it's going to create this cubic dip, and then rise up through 4. And there we go. So that's our function, y equals 2 x plus 4, x plus 1 cubed. One last example. Example 3 says, find the equation for the family of cubic functions whose x-intercepts are negative 1, 2, and 5. Again, I just want you to find the family of cubic functions. So all I really want you to find is the general equation. Keep the a in there and don't substitute it with anything. We're just going to leave it as a. So y equals a, roots at negative 1, so x plus 1, at positive 2, so x minus 2, and at positive 5, so x minus 5. That's it. That is the family of the cubic functions.
More specifically, I want you to take that family and this time find an equation um, of, of the member of that family that passes through the point 1 and negative 12. So same as uh, example 2, we know that 1 represents x and negative 12 represents y. So take that general equation and sub in for x and y. So negative 12 equals a x plus 1, x minus 2, x minus 5. Simplify and solve for a. So 2, negative 1, and negative 4. Okay, so that gives us a positive 8a on the right side. Divide both sides by 8, so that gives us negative 12 over 8 for our a value. Don't forget to reduce, so that gives us negative 3 over 2 for our a value. So therefore, the equation that goes through the point 1, negative 12 is y equals a x plus 1, x minus 2, and finally x minus 5. And there we go. So that is a lesson today on families with curves. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you ask in class. And I will see you later. Take care, guys.